multiplying expressions with trig functions. In algebra, when I see something like this, x times 3x minus 2, I multiply by using the distributive property. And so I say x times 3x, 3x squared, minus x times 2, 2x. These are not like terms, which means I don't have any way of simplifying. Here would be the final answer. Well, similarly, with trig functions, if I see something in front of a parentheses like this being multiplied, I can also use the distributive property. Here, I would have cosine x tangent x. That's how we write cosine times tangent. Plus, and then cosine x times 2 would be 2 cosine x. At first glance, it looks like that's about as good as I could make it. But with trig functions, there are often simplifications that happen because of our identities. And what you want to see here is, wait a minute, the tangent function can be rewritten as sine x over cosine x. That's the quotient identity. And then these cosine x's would cancel out, would divide out, leaving me with just sine x plus 2 cosine x. This would be the simplest I can make it, and so here is the final answer. What about in letter B? Well, in algebra, when I see a binomial times another binomial, that's where we use the FOIL method of multiplication. First, outer, inner, last. First would be 2x squared. Outer would be minus 8x. Inner, minus 1x. And last, plus 4. In terms of simplifying, I can collect like terms. I do have those middle terms that are like. But that's about it. Here would be the final answer. Again, similarly with trig, when you see a binomial times a binomial, go ahead and use FOIL. First would be sine x times sine x. That's sine squared x. Outer looks like plus sine x. Inner minus 1 times sine x would be minus sine x. And then last, negative 1 times positive 1 is minus 1. Uh, once again, those middle terms are like terms. This one works out particularly nice because they just wipe out. Sine x minus sine x is gone. That leaves me with sine squared x minus 1. Is that the simplest I can get it? Maybe, but when I see sine squared and I see 1, it sure makes me think of the Pythagorean identity. Let's see if I can make a sine squared minus 1 out of the Pythagorean identity. Uh, it looks like I can because if I just subtracted the 1 to this side and then moved the cosine squared over to the other side, I'll have sine squared x minus 1 on the left and then negative cosine squared x on the right. So sine squared x minus 1, going back to our problem, is equal to negative cosine squared x. And so here would be the shortest, simplest way to write the final answer. What about this example in part C where we want to square a binomial? Well, this has got to be one of the top five algebra mistakes people make. You cannot distribute exponents where there are things being added or subtracted. So if you're looking at this thinking, oh, we'll just square each piece, that is incorrect. Squaring means multiplying this by itself. And so you quickly realize, oh, this is just another FOIL situation. And that's how you have to work this out. x squared would be the first. Outer would be a 3x. Inner would be another 3x. I get a 9 at the back end. And when I combine my like terms, here's my final answer. Well, it's no different with the trig functions. There's something about this that makes you feel like you should be able to distribute this in that is incorrect. Don't do that. Instead, you have to recognize this is a situation like we had before, where you're going to have to multiply that item by itself. That will result in a FOIL problem. First would be sine x times sine x, sine squared x. Notice the outer term, sine x cosine x. The inner term is another sine x cosine x. So I know those are going to combine and give me two sine x cosine x's. And then the last is cosine squared x. Can I simplify? Absolutely, because I have a sine squared x plus a cosine squared x. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. The other term, 2 sine x cosine x. I can't see any other way I can simplify this, and so here would be the final answer. Thanks for watching.